I am going to survive 100 days in Ark Survival Ascended, a game where dinosaurs roam free and survival is pretty much based on how good you are at not getting eaten. Across the 100 days, I'm going to attempt to defeat all three of the main Ark bosses and go from being naked and afraid to being, well, fully clothed and afraid because the fear never really goes away. This video took a lot of time to make, so if you enjoy it, let me know by leaving a like or I may cry myself to sleep tonight. Okay, let's run it. Sorry guys, tried to make the character look like me, but can't give it any bigger muscles. Our journey begins on the sandy beaches of the island. I chose to spawn at South Zone 2, where I began to exchange fisticuffs with the tree. Before I knew it, I had crafted some stone tools and some clothing, so I was no longer naked and afraid. I was just afraid. I absolutely demolished the dodo population on the beach for hide. Um, but it's okay. There's so many dodos around, they can't possibly go extinct. Right guys? I was getting kinda hungry, so I threw down a campfire to cook the dodo meat. Gordon Ramsay over here. Chefing it up. And that's when I ran into my first catastrophic encounter. Uh oh, this isn't good. Ah, ah! I only just managed to escape into the water, because apparently raptors are actually stupid and they can't swim. I wasn't having that though, so after I crafted a bowler, I got my revenge. Haha, <laughs> lucky my friend. But I immediately felt bad when I realized the raptor I had killed had a baby. Oh no, what have I done? So I took it under my wing and I decided to raise it. The first home I built was nothing to be proud of. I'm not going to be winning any awards for its structural integrity or, or its design. Um, but it was thirsty work, so I took a delicious gulp of salt water to hydrate myself. Because, you know, that's how it works. And after that, I began turning my house into a home. Hmm. I don't really have a lot of space to work with. I then put a bed down so your mum had somewhere to stay when she came over. <laughs> and in the late afternoon of day one, my raptor had finished growing up. I decided to name him Bill. The second he became an adult though, he threw hands with another raptor. So I don't know what that says about my parenting ability, but I'm gonna call it self-defense. Bill almost lived an extremely short life. As day one was drawing to a close, I decided to try and get some cloth pants on so I wouldn't get arrested for indecent exposure. And I crafted a bow and arrow to kill more dodos for some hide. Bill, I've got you a saddle. Yeah, by the end of day one, we were looking pretty decked out. Day two began with another delicious drink of salt water and crafting some narcotics because I was planning on having a wild night later on. I then saw a white drop in the distance and decided to take Bill for an adventure. Although it might as well have been empty with how garbage the loot was. But I did place down the campfire anyway to expand my grilling potential. You may notice in the corner of my screen, this theory was hanging around and that turned out to be a disaster in the making. No! Bill! No! Bill was the first victim of a brutal death, but he gave us a bit of hide, so I guess it wasn't all bad. In the first few hours of sunlight, I had gathered all of the resources to make a refining forge, but I didn't really have anywhere to put it, so I had to expand my beachfront property. Not sure if putting a burning forge next to a house made of dead branches is the greatest idea, but yeah, maybe don't try this one at home. I smashed a few rocks for the raw metal, and then I crafted a smithy to make some metal tools so I could finally get rid of the stone ones. Get the hell out of here. Being stuck on the beach was kind of a pain, so I decided to head a little bit further along the beach to go and tame a pteranodon. Not long after starting my search, I found a level 104 and I decided to knock it out. It's way quicker to tame a meat-eating dino with prime meat instead of normal meat, so I killed this baby parasaur to speed up the process. 13 prime! Far out. This PC is going to be eating good. From then on, it was a bit of a waiting game. Because, yeah, this PT was snoozing. He was taking his time. But not before long, he had woken up and I started the walk back to my thatch hut. I named the PT Gladys and started the work to craft a saddle. I needed chitin and some hide, so I spent the afternoon of day two farming away. I even went and got the Pegomastix Explorer note to gain some more levels. Yeah, no thanks. I'd rather pour acid into my eyes than read anything about this creature. It was kind of tough living on the beach because I had to walk a fair distance to farm important resources, so I crafted a raft and began constructing a small wooden base. My plan was to sail around the island and build a home on one of the icebergs in the northwest, 
That meant upgrading from thatch to wood and building something a little bit bigger than my smaller thatch hut. By the end of day two, I was moving everything inside of my base to prepare for the big move, and I even crafted a preserving bin to keep my food from spoiling. On day three, I took my PT out to farm some metal, and then I got into my raft and I set sail. I was going to travel along the right side of the island, so I had time to farm pelt to make fur armor along the way. I knew it was going to be absolutely freezing in the snow biome, so I wanted to be as prepared as possible. At some point in the journey, I started getting chased by a crocodile. Pretty much a normal day for any Australian, so I dealt with it quickly. Along the way, I grabbed some oil, and I pulled into a river to tame a trike. I needed a decent berry gatherer so I could farm more narco berries, and a trike sounded like the best idea at the time. By nightfall of day 3, the trike had tamed, and I decided to name it Bertha. I was getting pretty close to the snow biome, so I had a look at the hidden lake just above the river I had pulled into, got some cementing paste and killed some beavers for the pelt. On day 4 I tried to continue my journey, but I had to turn back because I was dying of hypothermia. Which ended up being the mistake of the century because a rex ended up attacking my boat. And it killed my trike after less than a day of me taming it. It was a tragic end to Bertha's story, but I did get a few narco berries before she unfortunately crossed the rainbow bridge. And after finding out the level of the Rex was 120, I decided to tame it. Haha, <laughs> okay. This is by far the worst trap design I have ever attempted. Alright, we've got it. By day 4, we were already taming our first Rex. It was a crazy accomplishment. And by day 5, I placed a trap down next to the knocked out Rex to tame an Argy. The Argy was pretty low leveled, but it did mean I could travel longer distances in the air and carry more items, so it was definitely a win in my eyes. After taming the Rex, I decided to name it Edgar, not to be confused with Edgar, and I named the RG Simon. I couldn't afford the saddles for either tames just yet, so I continued to sail into the snow biome as night fell. On day 6, I crafted a Rex saddle and took the Rex out for its first combat experience, but we unfortunately had to run away because we almost got clapped up by an Alpha Kano, and we lost Simon in the fight. It was very sad. After parking the wrecks, I continued north, and after passing through a few treacherous ice fields, oh god, the Titanic could never have done this, we made it to the iceberg I planned to call my home. Far out it's cold here. The first thing I went to go and do was tame an Anki, and thankfully I found a few running around near my iceberg. Taming another Argy was the next step, and this time I found a level 64 on a beach nearby that I decided to knock out. I also found this really cool yellow Dodicarus that I decided to knock out as well because they're pretty good at farming stone and I wanted my next base to be an upgrade from the wood. On day 7 I went to farm chitin for all of the new saddles I was going to need and then I took my new Argentavis back to the iceberg. The Dodicarus was the next tame to wake up. Unfortunately, the Anki died midway through taming it, so sadly it'll never wake up. Rest in peace. So I went on the hunt for a new Anki, and I found a level 68 that I could carry back to the safety of the iceberg. I then smashed a few more rocks to get some metal, and started cooking away. Nope, not that type of cooking. I also farmed up some hides so I could afford to craft some new saddles. Later in the day I took the Anki and the RG out on a fat metal run to fill up the refining forge. And then on day 8 I caused some mass deforestation and chopped about a billion trees for some wood. I also took the Dodicarus out for a crystal and a stone run. Back at our headquarters, construction was beginning to take place. I wanted to build something decent, and the first step towards that was laying down a solid foundation. The next step was placing the walls. I used stone for the bottom section and then used wood for a bit of texture. I also tried doing something fancy with the roof, and it ended up looking a bit odd. If I was an apprentice on a job site, I would have been screamed at by now. Wow. This is looking like absolute garbage. But against all odds, on day 9 we finished the main structure of the base. It was pretty much just an empty shell though, so I got my interior design boots on and started the work. First thing I did was place some fabricators down, and then I placed a smithy. I realised at this point I was out of hide again somehow, so I took my wrecks to the mainland and started farming. Night was starting to fall upon us as I returned, but I did take the doad out for a stone farm. I needed stone for the refining forges, and they were not cheap. Farming wood by hand was getting kind of tedious, so on day 10 I found a beaver that would help out with my wood production. It was a pretty easy tame once I got it back, but I did spend most of the day waiting around for it. Come on, man. But I was getting so much wood after. Ugh. 
don't clip that out of context. In the late hours of day 10, I crafted a sickle to get some fiber, because I wanted to build a nice veranda around my base. Unfortunately, everything I touch falls apart when it comes to building, so it was looking a bit worse for wear. But after a heavy day of farming on day 11, we eventually got something that slightly resembled a veranda, if you squinted and looked at it from a distance. Day 12 began with another metal run. It wasn't a huge farm, but we did get a few refining forges cooking away. After a long day in the mines, I crafted some scuba gear to try and tame a dolphin. I really wanted to get around the ocean quickly, and after finding one so close to my base, I started to force food down its throat. And I actually managed to tame one. After that, I was zooming around the water and collecting silica pearls from the ocean floor. They were an important resource when it came to making electronics. Unfortunately, I left the dolphin out for two seconds, and yeah, it didn't last very long. Oh, for f- I also placed a map on the wall, slightly wonkily. On day 13, I crafted a generator, so we're really moving up the progression ladder. Ooh, let's place this next to my bed. Hopefully I don't get carbon monoxide poisoning. It was a pretty chill day of gathering resources, but by the end of it I had gotten everything together to craft a cryo fridge and some cryopods, which meant I could easily travel around the island with my tames. By day 14, I was really running low on cementing paste, so I took my PT out to search the beaver dams, but they were nowhere to be found. Couldn't find any for the life of me, not a clue where they went, so that was quite disappointing, but we did get a few decent saddles from a few drops as we flew around, so it wasn't all bad. On day 15, I set out to the nearest iceberg to kill some penguins. Penguins give you polymer, which is essential for late game gear, and they were abundant in the area. I also somehow got a vault in a yellow drop, which is unbelievable because they're usually so expensive to make, so I was in a pretty good mood after that. I decided to place it next to the generator and the cryo fridge, completely blocking access to the back door, but who cares, I wasn't using it anyway. I got some more food cooking and then I began emptying my raft and moving everything over to my main base. It was a bit of a tedious process, so to take a break from that I went on another metal run, because nothing says relaxation like farming metal when a billion things are trying to kill you. We got an alright amount though and I was pretty happy with our haul. On day 16, I got my trusty scuba equipment, and I dived into the water to go to an underwater cave. I needed a large amount of silica pearls for electronics, and there was quite a few down there. It was on day 16 that we made a monumental discovery. I had the urge to go and check out the drop landing in the snow biome, and what do you know, we got a Rex saddle blueprint from it. This was absolutely huge, because it meant my Rexes would be slightly stronger when it came to defeating the bosses, and it was pretty cheap to make so I was over the moon about it. I ended the day with another search for cementing paste, and thankfully I found some this time around. Finally, oh my god. On day 17, I took my Rex to the mainland once again for another ginormous hide farm. I also needed to get a bunch of meat so my tames wouldn't starve. It was a bad day to live in the area, I'm not gonna lie. I also found this white drop and got a flag. On day 18, I decided I wanted to surround my iceberg with wooden spikes, so I caused some more mass deforestation with my beaver, and began placing the great wall around my base. It was too big of a project to finish in one day though, so being the procrastinator that I am, I left it half finished. On day 19, I decided I wanted to make a chemistry bench so I could increase my production of, uh, illicit substances. But I needed a lot of electronics, so I went searching for another underwater cave and I gathered the pearls. And I finally placed it. Blind because I was tripping out on mushrooms, but somehow I managed to place it straight. It was a miracle. On day 20, I crafted an industrial cooker, so I would hopefully never run out of cooked meat. I can see it, I feel it, it's cooking. I also placed a trough so my tames wouldn't starve to death. On day 21, I took the RG to go and tame a saber-toothed tiger, and that's when disaster struck. Unfortunately, I had to leave my PC and my house to go and chase my dog, who had just escaped, my boy Harry saw a moment of freedom and decided to act upon it, despite living a massively privileged life. And whilst this was happening, I left my PC on accidentally. So the story skips forward a few days here. You can blame this guy for it. But by day 24, we had tamed a new RG, and by day 25, we were out once again looking for a saber-toothed tiger to tame. Getting a decent level was important because I needed to take one down into the caves with me to get artifacts, and it's a dangerous world down there. The first one I attempted to tame somehow got away, 
but not long after I found a level 145 and just decided to tame that one instead. I wanted to take it back to my base to knock it out, but they're kind of really strong, so I figured out pretty quickly that wasn't going to be possible. God damn, this thing does not do a small amount of damage. So I dropped it in some ruins and knocked it out that way. It was a bit of a close one, but thankfully we knocked it unconscious before it lost all of its health. Oh, well, thankfully it didn't die. That would have been catastrophic. Kill me. And on day 26, I sat around for the majority of the morning and waited for it to tame. This guy must think time grows on trees. Thankfully, because I had cryopods, it was pretty easy to get him back to base. I saddled him up, and then I realized it had been quite a while since I last named any of my tames. So I named the Sabertooth Arthur, and then I named my beaver Christopher. I was kind of just throwing out really random names, but whoever gets the most amount of likes in the comment section, I'll name my future tames after you in the next 100 days video. Not 100% sure when that next video is going to be, but I'll keep you updated. I then took my new tame out to get some explorer notes for the levels, and I randomly found a sheep on the top of this cliff. Sheep give you mutton, and mutton can tame pretty much any meat-eating dino really quickly, so I killed it on site. I then gathered the mutton to take back to my base. After getting the explorer note, I killed some dinos to get some levels with the forex, and then to finish off the day I cooked the mutton in my industrial cooker to preserve it and store it in my fridge. On day 27 I checked out this purple drop that was extremely average, but the next one I checked out had some paste which was pretty cool I can't lie. The third one I checked though, absolute garbage. In the afternoon of day 27 I decided it was finally time to venture into a cave and go for my first artifact. To fight the bosses, you need to collect three artifacts each, except for the dragon that needs four. And the first one I was grabbing was the artifact of the clever. After a nail-biting start in the cave, I realized it was going to be much tougher than I first realized, but I pushed on, stopping to heal my saber tooth along the way. Eventually, I got to an opening in the cave. Ah, oh, I can see the artifacts. It's straight in front of me. The problem was there were so many creatures, there was no way I was getting out alive with my tame, so I decided to go for it on foot. Okay, it's over there. Let's do this. Come on. We got it. Go, 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 go. Ah, come on. We've done it. I then absolutely sprinted to get out of that cave. It was a traumatic experience, but we did get our first artifact. And that was a massive win for Vitality Industries. On day 28, I crafted an artifact pedestal and put my hard work on display for all to see. Then got really confused when it wasn't showing up and realized I'm actually stupid and I just had it in the wrong place. Ah, uh, this is the sign of success, lads. I then went on the biggest wood farm of my life with my beaver to fill the refining forges. I even removed the roof of my house to fill them a bit quicker. I then followed that up with the biggest metal run of the century to grind out even more metal. Had to clobber a few things along the way. On day 29, I filled the forges with at least a few thousand metal. God damn, this room is going to have a higher carbon emission than Taylor Swift, probably. I then got some garbage out of a purple drop, followed by even more garbage out of a green drop. I then got some cementing paste out of some beaver dams. It was a pretty chill day of drop hunting, but I didn't get anything noticeably good. Nothing worth writing home about. On day 30, I took my Anki to a neighboring iceberg to farm oil rocks, and that was quite a decent little farm in the early morning. Later on in the day, I took my Sabertooth Tiger out to kill more penguins, because I was in desperate need for more polymer to fund my next project, an industrial forge. On day 31, I had gathered pretty much every resource I could possibly need for one of these things, and after waiting on a bit more metal to cook, voila, I had it crafting. The next thing I did was place a metal platform next to my base. Probably didn't need to craft the platform out of metal, but I wanted to give the impression that I was rich AF. 
To have one of these guys in only 31 days was a monumental achievement. Usually it takes me a lifetime on an official server. I then emptied my inefficient carbon producing refining forges and moved it all over to my new industrial forge and got the metal cooking over there. At this point in the game I wanted to go out and tame another berry gatherer. I wanted to craft some med brews to make going through the caves an easier process and to do that I was going to need a boatload of tinto berries so I started gathering some narcotics. I was going to head to Herbivore Island to see what there was when on the way I stopped to get this yellow drop and somehow we got a Sabertooth Saddle BP. Ah uh, yes, the game has heard my cries. This is going to make going through the caves so much easier. Upon reaching Herbivore Island I found a Brontosaurus that I decided to knock out and try and tame. It's quite a big undertaking as they are massive creatures, but thankfully this one was a bit of an idiot and just ran in the other direction. Once I had it knocked out, I began farming berries to tame it, and yeah, it was another chill afternoon of waiting around for it. In the early hours of day 32, the Bronto had finally woken up, and I decided to name it Littlefoot. The real ones will get that reference. I got it back to base, saddled it up, and then I parked it in the corner of my iceberg. I had a decent amount of metal in my forge, so I transferred it into my fabricator and crafted an industrial cooker to help with the production of med brews. I also crafted a water tank so it would be irrigated, and then I made perhaps the smartest move of my career, by placing the water tank under cover so it couldn't collect any rainwater. This is genius on a whole other level. I then placed the cooker, spent a couple of minutes puzzling over why it wasn't getting any water, then I just dismissed it thinking the game was broken. I then decided to put up one of my flags, and I painted my logo on it. It actually turned out alright. This is a historic artwork. I'm basically Van Gogh. On day 33, I farmed a bit of hide with my saber tooth so I could afford to upgrade a saddle. I was preparing to go back into one of the caves for an artifact. The next thing I did was farm a huge amount of berries on the mainland with my Bronto. I did run into a bit of a disaster upon returning as my tame fell through the ice and I couldn't get it back onto land. Your head is in the air. How are you drowning right now? Amazing game physics. The Brontosaurus just stops breathing when it enters water. I would like to see the scientific research papers on that one. It was another sad tragedy, but thankfully we had a decent amount of berries from the farm we could use to make med brews, and that's exactly what I did. On the evening of day 33, I prepped an entire kit with multiple sets of flak to prepare for the next caves I would be venturing into. On the morning of day 34, I parked my RG, placed some sleeping bags, and vented, vented, vent, ventured into my next cave. God damn. My strategy for this one was to just run through it at breakneck speed and not stop for anybody, which was working out pretty well for us until we got to the end bit. We had to stand our ground and fight off like a million spiders, so just another average day for any Australian. I actually do this every morning before I go to put on my shoes. After killing a snake that was defending the artifact with its life, it was finally mine. But the next mission was escaping the cave. And let me tell you, whew, that had its moments. Hmm, this is not looking good right now. Uh, no, it's okay. it's okay. We got this. We got this. After a daring escape, we had a pretty clear run to the surface and got out with no further issues. The day was still quite young and the next cave on my list was close by, so I decided to hit up another artifact cave whilst I was in the area. Now this one was rough. I would be lying if I said it was an easy run through because I got my ass handed to me on the way down. But I was sprinting for my life, and somehow we managed to get the artifact and escape the area successfully. But sadly, my Sabertooth was killed, and I had to carry on without him. Rest in peace. Thankfully, I managed to get out without any more issues, but then I realized I did not have any way to throw out my Argentavis to get back to base, because you need a cryfridge to do that now. Best game of all time, am I right? 
so I started the very long walk back to my iceberg. I got back to my base around day 36, and I didn't do much aside from repair everything I had lost. Kind of just spent the time organizing things around on day 37 as well. On day 38, I realized I was going to need more saber-tooth tigers for future cave adventures, and I found a level 135 in the early morning. It was a similar pain in the ass trying to take it back to my iceberg to tame, so I just dropped it in some more ruins and that did the job. It actually got stuck in the basement somehow, which was perfect and it led to a pretty easy tame actually. Once it had woken up, I checked the stats, but yeah, I couldn't really tell if it was good or not. Later on in the day, I checked this yellow drop and got another saber tooth tiger saddle, which is a crazy find, but this one was practically useless because it was more expensive and gave less armor protection. I tamed another saber tooth so I would have a breeding pair, and on day 39, I got them together to produce offspring. It was a big moment for Vitality Industries as we were expecting our first babies of the video. I got some odd jobs done around the base as I was waiting for it. I placed another artifact down around the corner, and I made a wooden behemoth gate, just so I had an entrance to the iceberg. I was planning on finishing the spiked wall at some point, but it wasn't a priority that was very high up on the list. I would get to it, eventually, down the road, at some point. After I had gotten all of that done, I sat around the saber tooths to witness the birth of my new tames, and what do you know, somehow we got triplets. I was not expecting that outcome, the father definitely wasn't expecting that outcome, but I was pretty happy about it. Ah oh, damn, these guys are actually kind of cute. I was going to need a ton of meat to sustain their growth, so I killed a mammoth that was hanging around in the area and fed them so they wouldn't starve. No need to call child protection services on me. I even got some of their imprints so they would be stronger when they became adults. It was pretty clear though I was going to need even more hide to keep up with the saddle demands, so I took one of them out to the mainland to farm hide and meat. On day 40, I tamed another brontosaurus on the mainland, so I could go for an extremely large berry run. The berries were much more abundant in this area than when I last farmed with a bronto, so we got a pretty decent amount by the end of it. This time, I remembered to use a cryopod to take it back to base, instead of swimming it, because we all know how that went. On day 41, I began searching for a rex to tame so I could start my new breeding line, but it wasn't until day 42 that I found my 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 first five oh my days my first high level female rex. Let's go. Smash that. And from then on, I was on a roll. After taming that rex on day 43, I found another high level rex closer to my base, so I tamed that one as well. In the very early hours of day 44, I began breeding them all for babies, and from then on it was just a waiting game for their eggs. By this point my saber tooth tigers had well and truly finished growing up, so I did a bit of organizing whilst I waited. I got a batch of two rex eggs, but I didn't have anywhere to hatch them. I needed to make air conditioners, but I didn't have the electronics for it. So I took my trusty scuba down to an underwater cave to get some pearls, but for some reason there weren't any there. Ah, uh, well, this is awkward. But we did get this useless red drop containing a lance BP and a mining helmet. Big profit. So I headed to a different pearl spawn location, and thankfully there were quite a few in the surrounding waters. On day 45, I began to build my breeding platform. I needed it somewhere in the open so I could walk the baby dinos and store food for them as they were growing up. I crafted a fair few air conditioners and placed them together in a line. I then placed a generator, and that was the beginning of my breeding station. I threw out the eggs, and from then on, it was another waiting game for them to hatch. From one of the eggs, we actually got twins, which was handy, but unfortunately, they all came out as males, which meant we couldn't increase our egg production, which was a bit of a bummer, because that's what we really needed at the time. I got most of their imprints though, except this guy who wanted simple kibble, which was just way too overcomplicated to try and get. This man thought he was born into luxury, and I have some bad news for him. For the rest of day 45, I kinda just hung around waiting on them to finish, but on day 46, I finished the mighty spiked wall project and gathered all of the resources to barricade the iceberg. You may be asking, what could you possibly be defending yourself against? And that is a good question. The rest of day 46 was a rex breeding day, had the females produce more eggs so we could increase our boss fighting army. We got another rex hatching and that was somehow male again. The art gods are not blessing me with a daughter. 
so I tried once more on day 47 and got another mail. Are you kidding me? I'm fairly certain there was a conspiracy against me, but I pushed on and tamed a Lystro on a nearby beach. Having a Lystro near your tames basically helps them gain levels over time, and that was the biggest thing for me. The Broodmother fight was coming, the artifacts were getting collected, and the Rexes were coming together, so getting some decent levels was an important thing for sure. I took the Lystro back to my base and finished taming it there. Later on in the day, I put my third artifact on display and used the Lystro to level up my Rexes. When researching the best way to defeat the bosses, I learned that Megatheriums are quite good against the Broodmother, so on day 48 I found a decent leveled one to tame. It took a little while to get to it, but it wasn't too difficult, and on day 49 I saddled it up with a decent saddle I had gotten from a drop. I then parked it next to the Lystro to get some levels. The next job was to go and find a Deodon to heal my Rexes before the first boss fight. Thankfully I found a really high level one in the snow, I knocked it out on this sheet of ice, and that was, yeah, that was the tame. Later in the day, I began clearing the green obelisk, and I placed a cryo fridge and a generator in preparation for the boss fight. I wasn't overly optimistic about my chances, especially because we weren't going in with that many Rexes, but in the moment, I think I said something along the lines of, she'll be right. So on day 50, I cryoed all of my Rexes, repaired my flak, and headed straight to the obelisk. I kept two Rex eggs back at the base in the event of a disaster, which was probably a good idea in hindsight. I then threw all of the Rexes out onto the green obelisk platform, and they were snoozing. It took forever to wake them up, but by day 51, they were finally on their feet, and I was ready to take on my first boss. Ooh, I'm Loki. I'm kind of nervous for this one. I placed in my artifacts, summoned the boss, and before I knew it, I was on my way to the arena. The boss fight started really good, we got the spider down to half health, but then cracks started to show. My rexes were falling one after the other, but the health was still going down. I knew it would be close, but I didn't know just how close it was going to be. Come on, come on, we can do this. Okay, we're on foot, the Rexes are dead, but it's so low. Come on, no, I'm, s I'm slowed, no! That was perhaps the most tragic end to that boss fight. To get that close for nothing is just a bit unbelievable, but I didn't let the loss affect me. I needed to bounce back, raise more Rexes, and hit that boss where it would hurt. So on day 52, I hatched more Rexes, and on day 53, I tamed a female Rex. On day 54, I began producing more eggs. This time we got a female from the batch, and that was a massive win for the community. More female Rexes meant more eggs, which meant a better chance at beating that boss. Later on in the day, I went out to tame another female Rex, which would hopefully speed up egg production. And by day 55, we had about the same amount of Rexes as we went into the arena with, but I know from experience that it wasn't going to be enough. We needed to at least double the amount to secure that victory, so the egg production continued. Unfortunately, I couldn't reuse the artifacts, so I had to go back down into the caves to go and get them. And on day 56, that's exactly what I went to go and do. It was pretty easy the second time around after knowing the best way to get down to each cave. You might be realizing I am kind of speed running through these few days because you have seen it all before. I am sorry for that. We should never have lost that first boss fight. The game is rigged. On day 57, we made a crazy find, a purple shotgun in a red drop. The gods were smiling down upon us, and they wanted me to win this fight, but we were not ready to go just yet. 
So on day 58, I continued to hatch more Rexes and raise them to add to my army. Thankfully, we got two more females, so we were getting like eight eggs per rotation, which was pretty good. The army was really building itself up. On day 60, I gathered the troops, went back and forth, healing them all with my Deodon. I had saddled them on the previous day and sat next to the Lystro to give them levels, so I couldn't have given myself a better chance. Once they were all fully healed, I cried them and threw them out at the obelisk. Damn, this is looking a bit crowded, not gonna lie. I think we had something like 20 Rexes ready to go, which is an impressive number by itself, and not before long we were back in the arena. On day 61, I started the boss fight. Oh, I'm getting deja vu. And I fought the spider once again. This time I was on the shotgun and we melted it. Zero casualties this time around. It was a success story for the ages. After killing it, I got the element and the spider trophy, and I ticked the first boss of my list. Afterwards, I cried my Rexes, and then on day 62, I threw them out at the blue obelisk to prepare for the next boss fight. There was no point having them sit around my base, and waiting for them to wake up is always a pain, so having them out like this was easily the best call. I also went and got my Deodon so we could heal them all up whilst I prepped for the next boss fight. I needed three more artifacts from different caves, so after placing the Broodmother victory flag, I repaired my flak and picked out my next Sabertooth to help me run another cave. On day 63, I arrived at the cave located on Carnivore Island, and after swimming through the entrance, I realized this was going to be a lot harder than I first anticipated. Oh damn, okay, this is not looking good. I was not ready to deal with that cave just yet with a cat, but I tried to push on with just a shotgun, and yeah, it was looking hopeless. There was zero chance I was getting to the bottom of that cave alive, not without help at least. So on day 64, I built a cryo fridge and a generator inside the cave so I could throw out an even bigger tame to help me out, a Rex. It was a genius idea if I do say so myself, and it took care of most of the bats. The Rex was too strong for anything to do any real damage to it, but despite that, still had to crawl to the artifact with broken bones, but a win is a win, I guess. Getting out was pretty easy as well, as there was practically nothing that could get in the Rex's way. Unfortunately though, my RG had died whilst I was going for the artifact. Clearly, I didn't park it in a good enough place, so rest in peace to the 58th RG I've managed to kill this video. You will be missed. I had to walk all the way back to my iceberg on foot and tame a new RG, but by day 66, Thankfully, I was back to being productive. One of the other artifacts I needed to get was in an underwater cave, which meant taming another dolphin. And thankfully, there were quite a few hanging around, but the first one I tamed was a pretty low level, so I kept searching for a better one, and eventually I found this level 85 that had gotten trapped in my iceberg's lake. It was actually kind of perfect, I was pretty happy about that. So on day 67, I began venturing into an underwater cave to claim my next artifact, it was a bit of a sketchy journey with all of the eels around, but I dealt with them by leading them to the edge and shotgunning them, and we eventually got to the artifact. On day 68, I went out to get the final artifact that I needed, and this cave confused me the most. The best policy was to just jump over everything. I'm jumping them right now. They need to wake up. We eventually got to the artifact, looking a bit scuffed, but a win is a win. And with that, we had everything we needed to go out and fight the monkey as our second boss fight. Our Rexes were fully awake and ready to go, so I put all the artifacts into the obelisk and we were off into our next arena. I read somewhere it's better to lead the monkey to your Rexes instead of leading the Rexes to the monkey, and that sounded like a wise piece of advice. So I took a few shots at it and it came running over, and holy moly, I've never seen a beat down like this before.
the guy got shredded into next year. 30 seconds was all it took for the Rex army to demolish him. And from it, we got our element and our boss head, successfully ticking off our second boss fight in this 100 days challenge. I was feeling pretty confident after such a successful win. I think it gave me pretty good odds at defeating the dragon. So after cryoing my Rexes, I threw out my army once again at the next obelisk so they could all spend time waking up whilst I went to go and prepare. I wanted to go for a bit of a different strategy this time around, so on day 61 I only threw out the very best Rexes, the ones with the highest levels and the best saddles. The reason being, I wanted to fight the dragon with some other tames as well, such as Theries and Yudis, because I had heard they give you a better chance of winning, and from experience I know how good they can be. That meant we had to do a lot between getting a whole new breed line established and retrieving four new artifacts for the final boss. So I had to get busy, and that's exactly what I did. On day 70, I packed up my old breeding platform because it was starting to get kinda outdated, and I rebuilt it from the ground up. This time, I made it look like an actual structure that was nice to look at, even doing that weird triangle thing with the roof that I love so much. And by the end of day 70, I had finished construction. It was looking pretty good, I can't lie. On day 71, I went for another metal run, because at this point, we were really running low on a lot of resources. And I know I've gone on like a million of these this video, but bear with me, bear with me. Later on in the day, I went out to get some cementing paste, because that was another resources I was in desperate need of. Pretty much running on fumes back at base. And by day 72, we were out searching for our first UD to help us win the boss fight. I found a decent level quite close by and decided to build a very unconventional trap. This really was a huge step in the engineering community, if you couldn't tell. As odd as the setup was, somehow it actually worked and we were knocking out our first UD to hopefully start a breed line. Yeah, I don't see this trap featuring on the next Captain Fat Dog video, but, but we'll see, I suppose. On day 73, our first UD was tamed, and I found another one from the opposite gender. I knocked that one out as well with an incredibly well thought out trap design. What the hell are these traps, man? What am I doing? Despite it being a low level, taming it meant I could start getting eggs immediately, and that was exactly what I was looking for. On day 74, I began breeding the UDs, and whilst they were doing their thing, I didn't want to get involved, so to pass the time, I placed another flag outside my breeding shed, and I painted an egg. I only had red paint, unfortunately, so it looked nothing like an egg, so to avoid any confusion, I labelled it, just to make sure. I am basically Leonardo DiCaprio with this masterpiece, or Da Vinci, whatever his name is. After messing about, the UD eventually popped out an egg, and we hatched it as soon as we got it. The UD actually got the good stats from the high level male, so that was a win I wasn't expecting. At this point, our tames were in desperate need for some food. It had been a long time since I last filled the feeding troughs, so I took my Sabertooth out with the RG and went on an absolute farming spree for raw meat. We gotta feed the homies. On day 76, I took my RG to the Redwoods to tame a Thylo. I kind of forgot why I tamed this guy. Usually I write down notes as I'm playing to remember what to say when I'm recording the voiceovers. But I didn't in this case, and I can't for the life of me remember why I tamed it, so... Oh well, we ball. On day 77, I went for the first artifact I would need for the dragon. It was actually in the cave closest to my base, so I don't know why I waited so long to get it, but it is what it is. This cave was actually quite easy to go through. A lot of the dinos could only come at you once at a time, and most of them were stuck in the walls anyway. So I made it in and out without much issue, but to be fair, I've ran this cave so many times on official, so I'm not surprised it was so easy. On day 78, I decided to go on another berry run with my Brontosaurus. That meant taking a cryo fridge and a generator with me to throw it out, which is an absolute pain in the neck, but after jumping through all of those hoops, I got a decent berry farm out of the way, and later on, I crafted some narcotics so I could craft a huge amount of med brews in my industrial cooker. I reckon I could open a hospital soon. On day 49, I had to go and get another artifact, so I spent a fun day in an amazing cave that poisons you every three seconds because why the hell not, am I right? I died like a billion times on the way down to this one because for some reason wearing scuba gear wasn't enough to stop the damage, but I got artifact number two and that's all that really matters. 
and that left only two more for me to collect to fight the dragon. One of those artifacts was deep in an underwater cave, so on day 80 I decided to tame a Basilosaurus to help me reach my third artifact. The Basilo was a long tame, and there was a lot of unnecessary interference from sharks around my iceberg, it was really doing my head in, especially this Alpha Megalodon that kept showing up when it wasn't welcome. It made the whole thing a hell of a lot harder, but eventually we did manage to tame the Bassy, and we turned it against the Alpha for some easy levels. They were fighting it out down there, and for some reason this Rex decided to get involved. Not sure why, but he was throwing hands, so I respect it. After killing the Alpha Megalodon, my Bassy had over 30 levels, which put me in a really good position to go and run the next Artifact Cave. So on day 81, that's exactly what I went to go and do. It was going pretty well until I ran into this Mosasaurus that decided to make life difficult for me, because why wouldn't it? And I got a bit lost once again. But I found the artifact in the end, and that put me one step closer to fighting the dragon. On day 82, I found a Therry to tame to hopefully start the next breed line. I would need to fight the dragon. And by day 84, I had a few of them together to get some eggs. Do Therries lay eggs? For some reason, I can just see them as the type to give birth naturally, but no, they actually did lay eggs. And that was a bit shocking. The two new breed lines I was working on were beginning to take shape. I probably should have fleshed them out a little bit more and got a, more, a bit more of each of them, but eh, she'll be right. On day 85, we got the last artifact we needed by grappling to the ceiling of the cave, like a coward, but it was an effective strategy at the end of the day. And with that, we had all four artifacts ready to go. On day 86, I used my Lystro to level up my Therries before I got them into combat. I didn't have a decent saddle for any of these guys, so I wasn't too hopeful about how much they would do for us. But herbivores don't take as much damage from the dragon's fire breath as carnivores do, so they were a good asset to have in the arena. On day 87, I began cryoing the troops and preparing for the final boss fight of the 100 days challenge. I threw them all out on day 88 and spent most of day 89 waiting for them to once again wake up. But on the morning of day 90, we were all ready to go and this was a huge moment for the video. I started the boss fight and I got ready to be teleported into the arena. I sat on the UD to give everybody the best possible chance, and the fight was tough. We got the dragon down to half health, and that's when things took a turn for the worst. My teams were dying and it wasn't looking good, so when the dragon flew away I rallied the troops. Come on guys, we can do this, I haven't spent one month on this video for nothing. The fight resumed and this time I was on the shotgun, desperate to win the battle but unfortunately losing was inevitable. I tried to make one last stand, but we died a brutal death to Ark's hardest boss. Rest in peace to me. Sometimes, you have to lose a battle to win a war, and in this case, both the battle and the war were lost. It is what it is. We were at day 91 at that point, and I decided to end the challenge there, just short of our 100 day goal. We got so close and I think we gave it a pretty good go. I know there's probably only 8 people watching the video at this point, but if you could comment, wow that ending blew my socks off, I'll know you're a real one and I'll heart the comment. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, 
I don't know if I can ever do another 100 takes video again after how long this one took to make, but maybe if this gets like a lot of likes, maybe I'll do it again. Thanks for watching. See ya.